Hi, I'm Melissa Beckford Simpson. Welcome to Schools Not Out, your daily classroom for CSEC and CAPE students. You can watch this lesson real time on Television Jamaica's YouTube channel or One Spot Media. We also are live on Music 99 and GoJamaica.com. If you have questions on today's subject, you can send them into Television Jamaica's Facebook page or Instagram at Television underscore Jamaica. Today's lesson is Cape Caribbean Studies. Before I go any further, let me just give a big shout out to all the students across the Caribbean who are watching this lesson today. And this lesson is just for you. You are right on time. Because today, we will be focusing on Caribbean society and culture. Yes. And we want to understand the factors that have shaped Caribbean society and culture. So what are our objectives for today? We want to define society and culture. We are going to be explaining the historical underpinnings of Caribbean culture, migrations and groups. We are going to be examining the cultural concepts that relate to this topic. So syncretism, hybridization, diversity, low culture, popular culture, etc. We also want to examine cultural forms in the Caribbean, music, dance, religion, language, all of those things. We are going to be examining the contribution of a few cultural icons. And we are also going to be looking at Caribbean culture in the diaspora. All right, so let's get right into it. Now, what is a society, first of all? These are some of the characteristics of a society. They have a shared, it's a shared common purpose, defined territorial space, and that is a little bit debatable because persons who are in the diaspora are also referred to as Caribbean society and they are not necessarily in the same space, but they are from the space. We have continuity over time and space, and that again is also a little bit controversial because society is not static. And then we have citizenship within a space. So all of those characteristics are what make up a society. So all the people who live in this space with all of those things, then that makes up a society. Now what is culture? It is learned behavior common to all people who live in this shared space customs and traditions, norms and values which guide how people in the society operate, uh, institutions which prescribe the behavior or help to teach the behavior to new members of the society, gendered practices that relate to that particular society. So for example, the Caribbean society would look totally different from maybe Middle Eastern when you examine that definition. All right. So we have different kinds of culture. We have material and non-material culture. Material simply relates to those tangible aspects of culture like the food, buildings, and you know, all of those things. And then we have non-material, intangible. We're talking about norms, values, abstract ideas that relate to this particular society, all right? So when you examine the Caribbean, and we're not talking about Jamaica now. It's not Jamaican studies, as I love to say. It is Caribbean studies. When you examine Caribbean culture, it is usually, usually you can tell about the culture of a group of people and how strong that culture is by how people outside of the culture feel about that particular culture, right? We also, want to now look at how we came to arrive at this culture in the Caribbean because we have established that it's very, very unique, right? So who are the people who came? Now, the historical underpinnings tell us, and I have been repeating this, and this is something that we know, we are characterized by migrations, several migrations into the Caribbean space. So we began with the indigenous people, the Tainos, Kalinagos, and Maya, who migrated to the Caribbean during the last ice age. And these were the groupings of people who Columbus and other Europeans who came after saw. So then we had the Europeans coming next, the Spanish, the British, the French, the Dutch. And so we have these unique, and now we know that not all of these European powers occupied everywhere. 
right? So already we are beginning to get a sense of how Caribbean culture is diverse. Mm -hmm. Then we had the Africans who came to work on sugar plantations. East Indians after the ending of slavery, after 1838, Chinese, Syrians, Lebanese, Jews, and we have a wide grouping of other people who came. All right? So migration then and colonization are two of the most defining features that have determined Caribbean culture. All right? And we're talking about the migration for the most part because we're made up for the most part of Africans, the descendants of Africans, particularly from West Africa, who came, who were forced to migrate here to work on those plantations. And you also had voluntary migrations, such as the Europeans who came to establish these um, economic systems. And then after enslavement, after 1838, the East Indians and the Chinese and so on, who came voluntarily to work in these um, parts of the Caribbean. So then we have colonization coming in, and this is a very important factor in terms of shaping Caribbean society and culture. All right. Now, enslavement and indentureship, two other terms that are very important when we are talking about how Caribbean culture is characterized. So we have the enslavement of Africans. Millions of Africans were brought here from as early as the 1500s all the way to 1838. Well, somewhere perhaps about 1807 when the trade stopped, but we know that there was illegal trade as well. And then you had indentureship now. This is where people come on their own on a contract to work. All right? Now, is Caribbean culture then homogenous or heterogeneous based on all of this? We're talking about homogenous culture. We're talking about sameness oneness does it look the same so if you should travel to trinidad to barbados to saint lucia would all of the caribbean culture look the same would we be eating the same things would we would we be practicing the same kinds of religions and so on is that the case or is it that we have a diverse heterogeneous culture many different things right what is it that we have I'm sure you know the answer to that. If you travel to different Caribbean countries, you'd be seeing, eating, experiencing different kinds of things, even though some of them overlap. Now let's look at this term, hybridization. The migrations of the various groups of people, what it has created is a hybrid kind of society. This is where people interbreed, mix with each other, and then the result of it is, you know, a mixing of people so we have some examples here the most the one that you probably would be most familiar with would be mulatto right that is the mixing of black and white sometimes it's also called creole i recall we looked at a question a multiple choice question like that in previous lessons and then we have mestizo that is a mixing of spanish and indigenous so there was some mixing going on there. It may not be a lot, but there was some mixing. And the result of that mixing, the offspring, is mestizo. Then we have dugla. Dugla now came in into the Caribbean, even though the word did not originate in the Caribbean. It originated in India, right? And it really referred to the, the groupings at the bottom of the society, or bastards. So the terminology was adopted into Caribbean culture, and it is used to refer to the mixing of Indian and white. And then you go down and you have quadroon, which is one quarter black, and then octoroon, one eighth black, and so on and so forth. So we have this mixing in the Caribbean. And perhaps if you should stop the average man on the street and ask, are you, what are you mixed with? Indian, you know, black, what is it? Perhaps the only thing that we can identify for some of us in the Caribbean is just black. You know, or like me, I don't see any touch of Indian, but it could be there, you know. Although my kinky here would not tell you that because there's no touch of Indian there. But it may still be there somewhere. There may be some white and I don't know, right? So we are a mixture and a hybrid group of people in the Caribbean. Let's look at another term now. 
syncretism very similar but used to denote something else and by the way i should tell you that hybridization is also used to refer to the culture itself and not just the mixing of the people all right Syncretism now is an amalgamation of different cultures to create a new one. Now the term is usually or most popularly used with when we're talking about religion in the Caribbean. So we have syncretic religions, all right? And we're talking about revival. Yes. Mixture of African and Christian. Shango. Pocomania. They are in the same bracket, mixture of African and Christian. Now, what, what happened on the plantation was that the Christian religion was forced upon these groups of people, but it was new to them. They had their own religion. And mind you, all of them were not of the very same culture where they came from in West Africa. They were from different groupings. So each of the different groupings came with their own religion. Now, one thing is common in African religion is the idea of spiritism. We call it spiritism, which really is the invocation of the ancestors into the worship, right? So revival, which is common in Jamaica, Shango in Trinidad, Pocomania in Jamaica, again, all of these religions are actually a mixture of the African, the spiritism, getting into spirit, you know, getting into spirit um, and mixing that with the Christian. And then we have Rastafari, which is another syncretic religion, right? And this one is completely, completely new. It was created here in the Caribbean, but it is syncretic still because it is it takes some aspects of ethiopianism right gaviism and a little bit of revival too a little bit of revival is in there so if you have ever been to any nyabingi celebration then you'd understand what i mean there's a lot of revival sounding singing and drumming and that kind of thing going on all right so syncretism then is a feature in the caribbean all right, now let's get to this term, cultural diversity, probably the most popular of the terms. So all the groups that came, all of the migrations, they all contributed something to Caribbean society to make it what it is, to Caribbean culture, all right? So it is the result, diversity then is the result of migration, hybridization, and syncretism. All right. So you have this mixture going on and out of the mixtures that have occurred, what you have is a diverse culture like no other. Right. And Caribbean culture is known all over the world. When you when you ask about Caribbean people, you're talking about life and vibes and niceness and a lot of, you know, partying and just life is good. You know, life is not always good, but generally that's how Caribbean people are. We carry a certain vibe. All right. So what are some of the positive effects of cultural diversity? The members of the society enjoy a mixture of different kinds of foods and festivals and musical celebrations. I remember I used to love mixing with, the, with my colleagues from the Caribbean when we used to gather for table marking. And they would take um, all kinds of things for us to, to try, you know, and because our palate, it's, it's different, it would, it would be kind of different for us but when our Caribbean neighbors come here they love our food they love our vibe and they always want East Indian mangoes <laughs> you know so there is this mixture and it's all good because we get to learn what else is in the Caribbean and what you know the rest of our people are doing right so you have this mixing going on that is that is very good because it helps to create a sense of Caribbean-ness. And we have explored the term Caribbean-ness before, you know, we did. We asked whether, there, whether or not there is a Caribbean-ness, you know. Looking at previous lessons, is there a Caribbean-ness or are we all just practicing our own little culture in our own little spaces everywhere? You know, is that what is going on? You can answer that question. Do you feel it? Other positives. 
you learn to appreciate other cultures and other kinds of people that are not your own when you have this mixture when you have this diverse culture going on so you learn more about different religious festivals and celebrations and so on and what you find happening is that some caribbean countries where a certain kind of activity did not originally belong to them they have taken it on so for example Carnival did not necessarily originate in Jamaica. No, it is more Trinidad and of course Barbados has Crapova and some of the other small islands, Antigua and so on. They, they do a lot of carnival. But we have taken it over and we have a carnival season in Jamaica. And when that is happening, we have a lot of people who are participating. So we have embraced other aspects of Caribbean culture that did not originate where we are in our different territories. All right? So we end up with diverse societies, plural societies providing unique conditions under which experiments in cultural hybridization may take place to create different forms of music, art, literature, and then there are people who will say, but that's not good. Because when that happens, it means that the culture, the home culture, is being erased. Is that true? Would we agree that it is being erased? Or is culture just being transformed into something else? Remember at the beginning, we said that neither society nor culture is static. It's changing. It changes according to the time. So what do we think of that, students? What are some of the negatives now of cultural diversity? Prejudices occur sometimes when you have different groupings, especially if they share the same space and you know they believe different things. And this usually occurs when it when it comes on to religion. Religious religions tend to clash, you know, because of the strong belief that different persons have. And then sometimes you end up with myths and misconceptions and stereotypes about groupings of people that are not necessarily true, all right? Certainly the Rastaf Rastafari culture can attest to a lot of that, all right? Then you also have hate may arise out of that, which is stronger now. Strong feelings of hate of another grouping of people. You know, I, I don't know if we have a lot of that now in the Caribbean, but certainly we can see things happening elsewhere, even now, that could tell us a little bit about that. Yes. All right. And then you have these continued feelings of discrimination, which leads to exploitation of groups that are considered to be other, that are usually in the minority. They are usually discriminated against and it leads to social unrest and all kinds of things let's go to another term now that is usually associated with caribbean society and culture we have cultural pluralism all right now this is a little different with cultural pluralism you have two groups or more who live who share the same territorial space but they do not necessarily interbreed you know, they don't necessarily mix with each other. They just occupy the same space. Sometimes coming out of the same misconceptions we just spoke about and myths concerning this grouping, this other grouping of people, all right? It does not exist so much now in the Caribbean, but in the early stages going into independence and so on, we did have that kind of situation occurring, for example, in Trinidad, all right? Let's move along a little bit further to this term we call Creole, Creolization. This refers to any kind of fusion of people. Fusion of people, customs, cultures, they come together in the space and you mix up and shake up and then something new, an entirely new culture comes out of it. Now this theory was actually put forward by Edward Kamar Brathwaite and he argued that the Caribbean has a Creole culture because we have put all the things together and make something totally new out of it, right? So we were placed in this impossible situation. We were enslaved for the most part, Caribbean people, and different cultures were being forced upon us. What we have done is we have taken the best out of it, 
and we have we have taken the worst out of it and we have made it into something good something that people admire something that people all over the world they want to come to the caribbean and it has become a tourist hotspot just because of that all right so the caribbean has a creole culture let's go a little bit further now high culture versus low culture what do we mean by that how can one culture be high and one be low all right when we talk about high culture we're talking about the culture of the elite the culture of those who own the means of production in a society. So, you know, it's considered to be proper. You know, those are the words that are used, proper. So we're talking about things like the opera and the ballet and going to, you know, look at art and, you know, all that kind of thing. That's what we call high culture. And then we have low culture now, which is usually the culture of the regular people, the masses. Right? And it's considered to be not of the same standard as that of the high culture. Now, sometimes this low culture, or most times this low culture, becomes the popular culture because it's the culture of the masses. So it is what is put out there in the streets. And then sometimes what you have is a, ver is a twist of the situation where the low culture becomes the culture of the day. And then even those, the elite, who believe that their culture is better tend to take on the popular culture. All right, so you have some, some, some images there of reggae, some fest and dance hall in general, pasta, pasta, and all of those things, all right? So the popular culture then is the culture of the masses, right? It has mass appeal. And the thing about it is that in the Caribbean, what we have is that the culture of the masses has now been the culture that rakes in the money. For, for example, the reggae song fest. You know how many people come to Jamaica every year because of that? Let's just go quickly into some Caribbean musical forms. I'm gonna run through very quickly. All right, so you have musical forms all across the Caribbean. Soca, we know that one, Trinidad and Tobago, Barbados, St. Lucia, Calypso, Kaiso, Steelman Chutney, Parang Chutney, Soca Parang, Soca, Raga Soca, Rapso, Pichakari, Tambrin. I'm doing my best not to bite my tongue. Spouge, Ring Bang, which is in Barbados, Marimba, Punta, Punta Rock, Belize. John Kuno in Jamaica, Mento Sky, Rock Steady, Rock, Lovers Rock, Roots Rock, Reggae, Dance All, all of that. And then you have Zook in St. Lucia. There's a number of them that are across the Caribbean, right? We have some other names here, Reggaeton in Puerto Rico, Tumba in Suriname, and so on. How about dance? Folk dances, quadrille, limbo, and so on, and even Mari Mari in Guyana, which is an indigenous dance that's also there. Kumina, which is both a dance and a religion, right? All right, so there we have pictures of Mari Mari in Guyana and quadrille in Jamaica. And by the way, quadrille was, came from the culture of the elite, all right? So it was, a, it was an English dance, and then we have added our own little spin to it in the Caribbean. Festivals in the Caribbean, crop over in Barbados, reggae some fest in Jamaica, carnival season in Trinidad, carry festa, right? Now all of these festivals, a lot of people come to the Caribbean every year to experience this, right? And it helps to rake in the money for the Caribbean people, all right? So we want to just play you a little snippet of, of one of these videos from Carrie Festa, all right? So we can see how the Caribbean culture comes alive. Calypso, land of mass, land of Bel Air. Land, land of the of Tobago Jig and the Tobago Heritage Festival. The land yes. of many beautiful waterfalls, many beautiful beaches, the home of the Pitch Lake, the home of all of us, Trinidad and Tobago. This is us on stage, portraying firstly the kings and queens of carnival, masquerading on the stage that they are all too familiar with, this stage, the Savannah stage.
All right, so there we have it. Yes, snippets of Cari Festa, a very, very festive um, occasion in Trinidad and Tobago and some of the smaller islands in the Caribbean. And a lot of people come there, you don't notice the colors and the excitement and the drama. Yes, that's how we are as Caribbean people. We love the colors and the excitement, you know? People love the excitement, so that's why they come to us to get the excitement and we know how to give it to them. All right. So we move on now and we look at the culinary arts in the Caribbean. Now, it's important for me to set the stage here. As it relates to Caribbean culinary arts, now we do have some remnants from the indigenous people such as the use of cassava. Yes, we do a lot of that. And the use of ground provisions. We do have a lot of ground provisions that we use in the Caribbean. However, it is important to note that the Africans on the plantations had to make do out of sometimes nothing at all. So they were given rations on the plantation, a little flour, some corn meal, you know, and so on. And they had to make do with that. So just some staples and some salted meat. That was their main protein, salted meat, right? No wonder we love salt, so much salted meat. No. So everything salted, I can think of. Pig tail, um, salt beef, salt fish, red herring, all of those things. That's what we have now and we use them. So the, the, the Africans on the plantation had to then find ways to supplement their diet. So they would use, you'll you find an abundance of use across the Caribbean coming out of this, of coconut, for example. In Jamaica, we put coconut in almost everything. So we have the run dung and, you know, all of that. And then you, we also use a lot of breadfruit to also help to supplement. And then on the plantations, they would have a little chicken, you know, and a goat or something like that. And that is how they would supplement the diet. But we also learn to use a lot of the, the refused parts of the meat, such as the feet and the head and the intestines. So the tripe and bean came out of that. Yes, so they had beans that they planted and they had intestines, so they make tripe and bean. And today, tripe and bean is very expensive, right? And you have cow foot and cow head and chicken foot, which make the body soup. And you know, all of these things, that is how, that is what we have gotten. And so we used it. We create a whole new culture out of it, according to Brathwaite, right? So our culture is Creole coming out of that. All right, so we, across the Caribbean, you'd not see the same kinds of foods. You have in Trinidad, here's a picture we have of doubles. Then you have in, in St. Lucia, their national dish is green figs. In Jamaica, that is green banana right so it's green figs and salt fish that's their national dish do you based on what we just said about our history and how our diet was on the plantation can you see where we get that and then in jamaica we have aki and salt fish as our national dish right now we, we brought aki from west africa and they give us salt fish so we put it together with some nice pepper and all kinds of things and we we make it into a nice dish all right so that is how we do it. Let's look, for example, Rastafari as culture. That's a totally different culture in the Caribbean. It's totally different. All right. We have some cultural icons. Professor Rex Netterford. We also have Derek Walcott. We also have Dr. Louise Bennett Coverley. Yes. You know any of our poems? For me family is not pure pure, my daughter so they teach. And when rain fall and pass the sick, my son Uriah preach. Yes, I know a lot of them from when I was a child. All right. We also have Bob Marley as a cultural icon, renowned for music all over the Caribbean. We also have culture in the diaspora, such as the Notting Hill Festival, born in a district in West London home to a large Caribbean diaspora. And they meet in August every year and celebrate in the streets, much the same way that they would do at home. All right? So on the general then, Caribbean culture is unique and diverse and people love it. Now, we're going to a break, but if you have any questions on what we have done so far, send them in to us and we'll see how best we can answer them in our various platforms. And we'll see if we can answer them, as I said. When we come back, we have answers to those questions, a quick re recap, and some multiple choice questions. Stay tuned, don't go nowhere.
Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands after coughing or sneezing when caring for the sick before, during, and after you prepare food before eating, after toilet use, when hands are visibly dirty, and after handling animals or animal waste. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it. Avoid close contact with anyone with a cold or flu-like symptoms. If you become ill, please visit your doctor or the nearest health center and share your travel history. The flu and coronavirus can kill. Let's protect each other. A message from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much for watching. COVID-19 tip. Protect yourself and others from getting sick by washing your hands. <laughs> Bez powodu uciekali tu marunowie, którzy po prostu odcinali się, ciężki był do nich dostęp, tak jak czasem ludzie zastanawiają się nad tym, co łączy Jamajkę z Polską, to być może jest to taki wspólny element, bo myśmy mieli naszego Janosika, mieliśmy partyzantów podczas II wojny światowej, a Jamajczycy mieli... Hey, so, from that video we were watching there, you will not get to see all of it, but we would have been looking at the maroon celebrations, and this is annual every 6th of january there is a maroon celebration in a compound and the maroon culture is very very unique it is it is a culture within the jamaican culture yes so they have a lot of african retentions and so on but they still have a lot of infusions of other things as well now at this celebration a number of people come 
to the celebration from abroad, from all over the world, to come and see what is happening with the Maroons. All right? And on January 6th, they celebrate the signing of the treaty by Kojo. All right, the treaty that allowed them to live in this area that gave them all of these hectares of land and allowed them to basically live as a state, almost a state within a state, within the state of Jamaica. All right, so a number of things, if you're, if you're still looking at the video there, you can pick up a number of other aspects of Jamaican culture that will come in. All right, so you have the jewelry making. All right. If you look closer there, you see some jerk pans and um, jerking going on and other kinds of Jamaican food. You also see things like the, 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 the man, see a vegetarian kitchen right there? The, the peanut man, yes, he's walking around selling peanuts. All right. And then you have the drumming and the singing and the dancing. And we spoke earlier about the spiritism that is a part of Jamaican and Caribbean culture as a whole, especially as descendants of Africans. All right. So we are going to move very quickly now for the last few minutes into using our brains as usual. You know, we can't leave here without doing that. So our MCQ challenge that is up next. Let me just remind you what it is that we do when we're looking at multiple choice. Now, Cape is just around the corner, so you need to be reminded of this. You read R, read the question at least twice before you answer. E, examine all the responses and eliminate. A, you attend to the key terms and superlatives in the question that will help you. And D, you determine the best answer based on the responses that are given. All right, so let us get in at least one or two questions before we have to go. Which of the following is not a characteristic of Caribbean society? So we have A, cultural diversity, B, social stratification, C, cultural homogeneity, and D, cultural hybridization. We spoke about all of these things. Now, based on the responses that are here, we, the answer to the question would be C, cultural homogeneity. We do not have that in the Caribbean. We have a, a heterogeneous culture, which means it's diverse. It's a mixture of many different things. All right? Next question. Which of the following is an example of material culture? So we have A, food, B, norms, C, symbols, and D, language. Example of material. No, recall what we said material culture was, those tangible things. So the answer to that would be A, food, because food is tangible. Norm, symbol, language, those are not tangible aspects of culture, but they are a part of culture nonetheless. Next one, social stru structures groups and institutions work together towards achieving social stability and ensuring that the collective will of members of the society is achieved now this question would relate to something as i would have done before this statement best summarizes which view of this of the society is it a a marxist view b a socialist view c interpretive or the functionalist the answer to this question would be functionalists. Remember that the functionalists believe that everything in society is important for society. So even crime is good for society in some way because it provides jobs. The police and the justice system operate because of crime. All right. So that is the view of the functionalist. So the answer then is D, functionalist. One or two more questions. Mulattas formed the middle layer of the plantation society. Remember, we looked at mulattas just now, mainly because they had A, Creole mothers, B, European fathers, C, European mothers, or D, Amerindian parents. What would be the answer to this one? And notice the superlative here. It says mainly, mainly. It doesn't mean that it, is, it could not be otherwise, but based on what the question is asking, the answer to this would be European 
fathers, all right? We did have white women who did have relations with black men, but that is the answer to this question, B. All right, we have come to the end. It's always too short. That's all today for Cape Caribbean Studies, and I think this may be the last lesson for Caribbean Studies. We hope you grasp some of the points we discussed. You can catch a repeat of today's lesson on JNN Today at 4 p.m., and in the school's not out highlights on Saturday between 1 and 4 p.m. It will also be on video on demand on One Spot Media. Remember, exams start July 13. Check the various platforms for revisions. And until next time, I am Melissa Beckford Simpson giving a shout out to all my Caribbean Studies colleagues who are watching. Bye, take care. Hi there, I'm Simon Preston from TVJ. Thank you very much for watching our YouTube channel. To see our latest videos and also to see live events, click here. To see our full videos on onespotmedia.com, click here. Thank you very much. For Reduce your risk of viral illnesses like the flu and coronavirus. Wash your hands frequently with soap and water. Cover your nose and mouth when coughing with a tissue and dispose of it.